What happens when you take 13 of Saskatchewan's best and most creative chefs? Along with a room full of local celebrities from the worlds of arts, politics and entertainment. and introduce them to 17 dedicated organic farmers and the exceptional products they produce. Well, you might just get yourself an invitation to Dining with the Stars. Nicole just read Life of Pi again. She yeah. said she cried at the end. Oh, good. Wonderful. And then Patty just finished Beatrice and Virgil, so that's what I get to read next. Okay. That's a so there's a whole Jan Martell like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we are here for Dine with the Star. And here is the star right here, Dan Walker of Vexaria. Not you can ever pronounce the name or spell it. It's always hell in the phone book trying to find out where that restaurant is. So we are doing a dinner for 12 people. I think, yep. Yeah. And so we have to determine what we want to eat. Yep. How many courses? Mm -hmm. We'll do like two to three apps, a main course with some choice, uh, choice, and then dessert, which is your favorite favorite yeah. uh, part of it. <laughs> so I like the rest too. The idea is that we have to do organic or local, mm -hmm. but I, we, we're more of a locally locally focused uh, food restaurant. So the organic part is something that we you know have on occasion we don't necessarily always use organic but you are committed to local though. yeah 90 percent of our uh yeah say 75 to 90 percent of our menu is local i mean obvious things like pepper and yeah and i actually like the joke that my pepper's from saskatchewan but the lady that we get it from has a plantation in costa rica so <laughs> you know no that's good so we have five courses yeah. um i'm vegetarian actually no i'm pescatarian yes. so i do eat fish Mm -hmm. So, do you propose to do a pescatarian menu, a yeah, vegetarian? Yeah, I think, you know, in honor of your, your views on vegetarianism and Note pescatarian. Note how he laughs. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do that. We change our menu every week. We, we buy the freshest product possible and we, we put it out there. So, we have the ability in the kitchen and as, as trained professionals to, to deal with all sorts of, you know, allergies or, or diseases, I guess. And, and, vegetarianism, pescatarian, and all that kind of stuff, like on a fly. So we have a really fantastic supplier, Jonathan Fonos, in uh, Dory Lake that will have uh, pickerel, uh, jackfish, uh, whitefish, and we'll do that. And we actually, we got some hemp seed, some organic hemp seed. And so one of the things we we're thinking about was, you know, crusting one of the fish with the hemp seed would be kind of, oh, wow. would be kind of good. Yeah, it would be really, yeah, I haven't either. So oh. that's something new for me. Um, one of the other growers that we have is... Uh, it burns in the oven, you might be very happy about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Um, is a gentleman out of Estevan, Raymond Aspinall, I think his name. I'm pretty sure I'm saying that right. He has a mill, an organic mill. So we, we're going to start getting flour from him. Like regular wheat, whole wheat flour, regular flour, rye flour, oat flour, buckwheat flour. And then he also has like all the grains too, uh, spelt. Okay. Um, buckwheat. So the, the, he actually had probably the one thing that was most interesting to us in terms of stuff that we can use, that we can use in several different dishes. So we're, we're quite excited to, to work with this gentleman and his product. So I'm, I'm really pumped about it. How do you get to know all these producers? Is there a, is there a sort of a network of them? Or? <laughs> Sometimes word it's of just, mouth? It take, yeah, word of mouth, the farmer's market, western producer, driving out in the middle of nowhere. And then just, just finding people or people like yourself or that, that are concerned about how they eat and having themselves found somebody and coming to me and going, hey, I've got this really great uh, guy that does this. And so we, we kind of sometimes have to be selective, but at the, also at the same time, we can, because we do change the menu as much as we do, we're, we're able to say we have this for this this long and that's it but so you by the way you get all your stuff directly from these yeah producers. it's all farm gate so we're we're there at the farmer's market or or in the case of getting all my wild boar for for gold metal plates was i drove all the way out to drake picked okay. up all my animals and then brought it back so like, straight from the from the abattoir so how many producers in all do you think supply you from it from your herbs to your wild boar to probably your fish? 50 or 60 
and farms. Wow, that's a lot to keep And that's in, in the, yeah, my, my bookkeeper hates me sometimes. If you um, are supplying local food and it's therefore also seasonal, right, mm -hmm. roughly seasonal, is there one season that you prefer over another? Like a spring or? No, well, fall? yeah, spring, spring here is a little, is, well, is fall almost rather when fall. Things have grown. Yeah, no, fall, fall is, is always is one of my favorites because okay. then the, I tend to think fall stuff anyways all throughout the year. Summer's really great, a great bounty because that like late July, August, September is probably the three best months because you've got just a, you have so Which many things again? to choose from. Which month? July, August, and September. Okay. I like that idea of living in season too, because it's also more natural. It's the way yeah. we lived like that for thousands and thousands of years. So. Oh, for sure, and it's it, it's it, it's it's an education for us too, because then we have to find what is in season, and then we have to know how long a season is, and then we have to figure out uh, can we can we can this? Can we freeze it? Can we preserve it somehow? Surprisingly, there's there's you'd be surprised at what you find in Saskatchewan. Like it just amazes me. I think actually this dish, this menu is going to be quite challenging for us. I think with the stuff, I think with what we get, we're going to just figure some really cool stuff out. So I'm excited. I, and we also the wine that we're going to have for this event is locally produced fruit wine from a brand new winery called Living Sky Winery, which I've yet to wow. try. Thank and what about dessert? <laughs> yeah, it's favorite topic. <laughs> We're actually quite in luck because right now I have a young lady, uh, Stacy Coates from Washington State, who's in Saskatoon working for Tracy Mussolini of Christie's Bakery. Um, so Stacy is a pastry chef and yeah, she's working for us right now. And down. she's going to wow you. Oh, yeah, I, we're going to challenge you to do something. She, Stacy actually was with us for a short period of time and she worked at uh, with uh, Jean Georges in New York City. So she so the desserts that she does are just fabulous. And you've been open for five years? Yep. And you're moving next March? March, actually the date, yep, March, St. Patrick's Day is my reopening in our new spot. It's gonna be on Broadway. It's fantastic. Doubling the size of the restaurant because I have so many people that come here, that call that can't get in, that yeah. are mad at me and I don't wanna be- Are you only gonna do evenings or are you also gonna start doing no, lunches? No, this is where we get really exciting because I've borrowed a lot of money from the bank. I have to pay it back. So we're gonna be open for lunch. Monday to Friday, and then we're going to do Saturday, Sunday brunch. Oh. And then dinner Monday to Saturday, I guess. You know why we won't even hear the rustling sound? The kids behind us are making while they're fooling around. Because if the story's all right, there's nothing else. No, oh, oh. And for a couple of hours, you get out of here. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. So give me something funny and sad. Every moment filled with meaning, good or bad. Give me soft chew, give me I love you too, give me a kiss and cue the band. Dear God, we uh, thank you for this uh, tremendous opportunity to uh, enjoy the, the bountiful blessings of this land and uh, the political stability that we enjoy and uh, all the wonderful people that have uh, come here together today and uh, ask that, uh, um, that you would uh, bless each one of them and that uh, you would bless uh, the conversation uh, around this table, and uh, uh, thank you for your goodness. Amen. This is a project that was uh, started by SOD through funding from the Department of the Environment's Go Green Fund, uh, where they uh, um, funded SOD to be able to create awareness of local and organic food. We have uh, 17 producers around the province who have have and are donating food to 13 restaurants. They're uh, across the province. We have some in Saskatoon, some in Regina, one in PA, one in last night we were in Birch Hills at the New Ground Cafe. Uh, <clears throat> I'm Jan Martel, I'm a writer. I feel desperately unaccomplished, I just eat. <laughs> <laughs> but I am looking forward to, the, to eating this meal and, and uh, talking more about where food comes from and how we can improve our, our food supply. 
I'm Alice Kuypers, I'm writer in residence at the Saskatoon Public Library and my resolution this year is to learn more about cooking and food, so I'm very glad to be here. My name is Amy Jo Eamon, I'm a writer as well and I write a lot about Saskatchewan foods and I love to eat a lot of Saskatchewan foods so I can write about them, so I'm really thrilled to be here. Hi, my name is Martin Meinert. Uh, I'm an organic farmer. I'm a CA and I work at public practice during the winter and farm during the summer. And I'm also the president of SOD, which is our organic group. Hi, I'm Betty Meinert and I'm uh, Martin's spouse. And together we have been organic farming since 1999. Yes. I am Sue Eklund. We own and operate Living Sky Winery just west of Saskatoon. We're a small artisan winery that uses Saskatchewan fruits. I'm Lester. I'm the uh, ugly half of Living Sky <laughs> Winery. Um, one of my passions, I think, is to connect with people who get the concept of eating well. Um, I'm actually a singer and I'm finishing my master's degree in vocal performance right now, but I'm married to a wonderful chef. And that's me. <laughs> <laughs> my name's Andrew McCarthy. I'm the executive chef at the Saskatoon Club. Um, I had the good fortune of being the guinea pig uh, to do the first one of these meals, so I paved the way for everyone else. So, you know, they learnt from me, I'm sure. <laughs> My name is Tracy Thompson. I'm one half of the duo Mayfly, and we're just actually very, very happy to be invited here tonight. Thank you, Marion. I'm Lisa Anra. It's an honor to sing for our supper tonight, and <laughs> looking so forward to enjoying the local food and company with you here. This is uh, Steve Gunther, a uh, partner with my wife, uh, Living Soil Farms, and uh, we grow organic vegetables and organic greens, and uh, we're also very happy to be here. My family and I, we uh, own uh, Living Soil Farms. Uh, this is my son, Jadrian, and uh, my other son, Micah, and wife, Jan, and Natalia. And uh, my name is Steve, and we uh, produce uh, organic grains and vegetables. We are uh, certified organic. Our vegetables and grains are certified organic. Uh, that means that we've had a, it's a third party inspection process that inspects our uh, farming practices and our documentation of that. Uh, the public is ensured that, that uh, it's not just us saying that it, we're certified organic, but that we are, uh, that somebody else has said it, uh, an unbiased third party. Some of the regulations uh, around uh, organic, uh, certified organic agriculture include uh, documentation of, uh, of everything that we've uh, applied and, uh, and what we use normally or what are allowed substances are naturally uh, derived uh, soil amendments and uh, cropping practices which include uh, crop rotations and uh, green manure plow down for fertilization and the basic principle behind it is trying to enhance the biology of the, of the plants and the soil instead of just using chemicals to uh, manipulate nature we're trying to work with nature. And the second uh, part of what our objective in organic is trying to improve the taste and the quality of the, of, of the vegetables. So we're trying to do two things. We're trying to eliminate uh, toxins and uh, soluble, uh, undesirable things that get into the water we drink and the air we breathe. And uh, the second thing is to try to uh, build a healthier, tastier plant uh, working with nature. One of our primary objectives, or challenges, you might say, is that uh, is to improve the fertility of our soil, um, and then we're trying to improve the fertility in order to improve the taste and the quality of our, our produce. And there hasn't been a lot of research, formal research, done in this area, and so that gets to be a bit of a challenge and takes a lot of time to research and uh, a lot of time on the phone uh, talking to uh, professionals and uh, other farmers with experience. Uh, in fact, it's widely acknowledged that over the last 50 years, uh, uh, the nutritional quality of our produce has uh, uh, decreased dramatically uh, in the last 50 years. And so we're trying to reverse that. The primary ways that we try to improve quality is uh, by enhancing the biology of the soil. And we do this with form, uh, most predominantly with uh, soil rotations and crop plow down. Another way that we improve uh, a nutritional quality of our produce is with uh, foliar uh, fertilizing sprays and they're uh, completely certified organic so they're derived from natural uh, mine substances and uh, natural uh, ingredients uh, so that could include um, uh, organic molasses, uh, uh, liquefied fish fertilizer, 
and a wide variety of bacterial and fungal inoculants uh, uh, to, to sort of jumpstart, uh, once again, the biological processes in the soil. We can fertilize our crops with our, our organic amendments, or we can water with our drip line here, the red drip line, and that's what uh, keeps us, uh, that's what uh, uh, keeps our plants growing in the, in the heat of the season when it's too dry. And uh, I'll just pull up a few carrots here. They're pretty small yet, but uh, this is what we're trying to do. We're, this is always the most exciting part of the season is to pull up what we've grown and uh, see if we, how, how good we are at, uh, at, uh, at producing a, a tasty, high quality product. And sometimes we're happy with what we've done and sometimes we're not so happy with what we've done. Just to talk a little bit about the name Living Soil Farms, that uh, uh, it says really well what we're, what we're trying to do. We're trying to create living soil farms. And one of the, one of the unintended side effects of, of, of the name has been some, uh, some thoughts from fellow farmers who, who, who uh, tell me, uh, well, what do you mean? Is our soil not living then? And that wasn't the intent. Uh, it's just a, a, a name that tries to say what we are trying to do, not necessarily what others aren't doing. And we, we haven't arrived yet. We're, we're not happy with, with uh, we've seen some progress, but we've only been at this for five years. And uh, we hope to continue to always strive to improve uh, soil quality and uh, food quality, as well as be better stewards of the land. This is our uh, potato patch, and uh, we have uh, a total of three acres or four acres of uh, a variety of, of varieties of potatoes. That includes a Benji potato, a Yukon gold, a banana potato, and then several uh, French fry potatoes. A lot of them are de destined for uh, restaurant use. Some are destined for uh, the farm, Saskatoon farmer's market. That's where you can buy a lot of our product. Some people buy off farm, on the, uh, off the farm here as well. So we have some farm gate sales as well. And we have a new venture that we're starting at the Saskatoon Farmers Market, or hoping to start at the end of the month, is uh, making our own French fries. We are trying to reduce our ecological footprint uh, from the transportation of food from uh, far away. And uh, I think if, if, if we do the math on it right now, we probably, ha the locally produced and bought products uh, probably haven't made an impact yet, but I think as as more and more people demand local, uh, mo local products, uh, the, the, the systems will become more efficient as well as uh, uh, our transportation and distribution systems are, are, will need some time to adjust. They've evolved over the last 75 or 100 years uh, to become a global system. And so that's how our system is, is, is designed. And so it's gonna take uh, a decade or two to achieve those kinds of efficiencies, uh, uh, transporting and uh, distributing uh, local products. Success is uh, an interesting concept. Uh, success is when one has done one's best and you see results, uh, you see improvement from year to year, and that can include uh, environmental improvements, uh, uh, yard improvements, uh, uh, crop improvements, facilities improvements, uh, and it's also uh, produce importance, uh, produce uh, quality, and that's probably the most important thing that we that we strive for. And everything we do uh, revolves around trying to improve our uh, our product. At Jan's request, and most of you know this, but in case you didn't, at Jan's request, and when he consulted with Dan, setting up the menu for the night, we came up with a vegetarian pescatarian and I learned a new word at that point, um, meaning we're having <laughs> fish and vegetables tonight. Thank you, uh, Jan, for agreeing to be our celebrity for the evening. And uh, we, we've added on some entertainment and we've got celebrity other chefs and we have also celebrities who are producers because the work that they produce needs to be ce uh, celebrated. Folks generally haven't been exposed to fruit wines and in Saskatchewan yet and so there are a million grape wines you can get at the at the liquor store and, and at uh, places like Cava where where uh, folks typically buy wine what we're mostly interested in is is making fruit wine from from fruit that is uh, connected to us so we grow our own fruit and and we're trying to be the world's greatest fruit wine
producer. We want to be the best fruit winery in the world. So like I said before, we started with the golden beets from Steve and some of his potatoes. So we just have some onion and a little bit of garlic, sauteed that, uh, added the potatoes and the beets to it, kind of got a little bit of color in it and then just threw old, in some old, good old fashioned water. Just uh, clink your glasses and have a good night and we'll... Uh, um, golden beets, I think, are always a little bit less minerally than, than the intense purple ones. I think the soup was way milder, but it was, it was beautiful. And if you didn't know that there were golden beets in the world, I would have guessed it was squash soup until I put it into my mouth. Well, I didn't know there were golden beets. No. I only knew the deep red ones, yeah. and it was really a very smooth soup. It was very tasty, and I thought it was very well blended, so I think it's great <laughs> having an 800 horsepower blender. It was very smooth. I didn't know there could be a beet soup apart from borscht, so it was yeah. nice yeah. to see that. <laughs> I'm very uneloquent when it comes to food. I just love it, so it's good. <laughs> yeah, but tell us about the beets. Well, the beets are good. I, I, I just, I was, actually, I was introduced to golden beets by my buddy Wally, uh, uh, Wally's Urban Garden, and he's been a tremendous help to me at the farmer's market. And uh, so he says, oh yeah, just grow those golden beets because they're a seller. You'll have no trouble getting rid of those. So. I, um, I used to look at food as nutrients and, and so I would take nutrients into my body and that's the only reason I ate, I think. And so eating that soup, I could, I could sort of feel those nutrients going in. It was, I loved that earthiness and it, and it, it felt very healthy and, and uh, delicious. Um, and I have a long-standing fear of beet soup after a horrible experience in Russia and I think I'm getting over it. That was lovely. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Alice. Happy birthday to you. Thank you very much. So, Rye, a rye flower gnocchi. This is. This is our signature dish in terms of what, from the, I, for whatever reason, we've decided to stick this on the menu. The first menu we had in the restaurant, and the rye flowers from Raymond Aspinall and Esteban, who have, has their own, their own mill. This is one of the, just give this a quick hit of heat. So the rye gnocchi, we're doing, the gnocchi, like as I was telling Naj again, has is, is been on the menu ever since we've been open, and this is a, um, so we're using Raymond Aspinall's rye flour in place of the all-purpose flour that we normally put in the gnocchi for this dish. We used uh, Steve's Yukon Gold potatoes and we normally use Yukon Gold for this dish all the time. And then we did the pastrami, pastrami cream sauce. So we took the spices of pastrami, coriander, cinnamon, uh, pepper, smoked peppercorn, uh, chilies, and cloves, allspice, and salt are the kind of the base of the dish. On the one hand, I think we have to maybe lower expectations. You know, we live in an economy where we expect to have everything available any time of year. So I think in future we have to tell people that maybe in the depths of winter we shouldn't be expecting to eat pineapple and kiwis. You know, we do have to try to eat more seasonally. Perhaps hopefully they'll start to appreciate what they do eat seasonally. Organics has definitely become more mainstream. Uh, there was a time when organic farmers didn't really admit it to most of their neighbors, um, where researchers didn't really dare to admit that, um, where it was not a politically sound career move to suggest that, that you wanted to study organics. Um, and all of those things have improved greatly. It's still a source 
of, of difficulty for some producers uh, in terms of their neighbors belittling the idea of organics and whatnot. That's still out there, yeah. absolutely. Um, but there's more support now. Uh, so we have Jonathan Phonos' uh, Northern Pike. Uh, John, this again, this phone fishes at the middle of the, in the winter time, this is a fish that he has, like he does almost year round, but this is the time when it's, this, it's the flesh is at its sweetest. So we kind of went, uh, again, the northern, the northern aspect of, of northern Saskatchewan, there's lots of uh, wild rice and, and the northern pike and then the blueberries. Um, then we have the pike, just sauteed on one side with a little bit of butter and some oil. Um, some salt and actually we, whenever we do our fish we actually do we use uh, Carol Thomas's um, white peppercorns that have been infused with lemon so we've been using that to season the fish with which I really like it, it really gives it a nice kind of pop to it and then a little bit of arugula with a little bit of the walnut uh, dressing from the salad on top there just to kind of finish it off I always like to have kind of a acid in, in the dishes that I think kind of just give it that, just that little punch and that to it. It's, most of you are done already, Alice. I can, you're just all ready to go, but you're pregnant, so that doesn't count. <laughs> Pretty straightforward. It's nothing really over the top. So this is my favorite dessert next to creme caramel and lemon tart. Um, so with the spoon there, we have a little, a little compote of uh, sour cherries. Now, as I was explaining to Marion earlier, we use two producers like the wild rice for our sour cherries, Dean Kutzler down in Lumsden with Over the Hill Cherries, and uh, Prairie Sun Orchard, uh, Claire and Wayne. I lost, lost her last name. Thank you. It's really neat to, uh, to kind of have a talent like that in Saskatoon. It's almost like having Anthony here too, you know, <laughs> having such great influences coming into the city. Our brushes with fame are, are fleeting and fairing, but now that they become locals, it's kind of, uh, it's not the luster kind of loses itself after a while. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little worried that the next book might have a character, a chef, strange chef in it or something. So, but it's always fascinating to talk to Ian about um, what he does and that. It's very interesting to listen and hear how he goes about you know, writing these amazing books and stuff like that. So um, it's a, a great talent to have in Saskatoon. So we applaud you for picking our, our home. We, we really are blessed with the place that we live and how wonderful it is. Absolute joy of tonight was not having to think about it, but just enjoying it, just relishing in it, hearing the stories about the food and sitting at the table with the people who produce this food and just immersing in it. I think that is the, that's what I really love about eating off the local bounty. It's not intellectualizing it, it's just being a part of it that makes it so special. Thank you.